One of the coolest things about my job is I get to think about how adults learn. By this I don't just mean formally, like in a classroom setting, but also informally, how we learn behaviors or even ideas, sometimes in ways we don't even know. So this summer uh, I saw a really cool video, uh, Dustin Sandlin put it on his Smarter Every Day page. Uh, it was about a backwards driving bicycle. So the backwards driving bike works like this. If you want to go right, you turn to the left. I was really struck by this video. So I brought this bike into the machine shop here at Brock University, and the guys hooked me up there by engineering some parts. And I brought it to my graduate education classes and asked them a simple question. Why is it so hard to learn? It turns out that offering an explanation as to why it's so hard to learn is almost as difficult as learning to ride the bike itself. There's so many factors at play here. There's mental factors, there's social factors, and cultural factors that all influence learning. So here's what I did. I asked people in the Faculty of Education to help explain why it's so difficult. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think it's, uh, it's going to make me look at something that I thought to be so simple as not. The longer it was, the more angry I got and frustrated, <laughs> so then it kind of went downhill from there. You have this cut out pathway of how the bike works, and when you flip that, not only are you fighting every intuitive process in your mind that no, right is right and left is left, as goes everything else in the world, um, you just have to, to come to terms with the grip, that the, the truth of the bike, that it's the complete opposite. And f finding that truth and understanding that truth is as difficult as riding a backwards bike. You've learned it and experience would tell me that if I go left, left should happen, but this time it kind of makes me start thinking about like, yeah, the idea of knowledge or understanding and this idea that maybe uh, riding a bike's more like a skill that like once you kind of mastered it, you think you have it and then they kind of throw a wrench in it and you get kind of confused. So a lot of my work is in teaching, I mean teaching and learning in um, adult and higher ed is what I do and so I think about um, people's constructs of what they already understand and kind of a neuroscience perspective that those brain pathways of learning to ride a bike from when we're young are so entrenched um, that there's been nothing since somebody learned to ride a bike that would trouble that, mm. that would make them rethink, you know, was that the way to do it? Because obviously it was for so long and I think to then be confronted with something where you have to reframe all of that in a hurry um, you know, we know that with a lot of relearning, like it could take six weeks of really constant practice to kind of wire these two brain pathways to let you do it. Challenging your preconceptions of what it is to ride a bike. Right. So I was thinking about, um, Cynthia Enlow has a concept called feminist curiosity. Okay. And it's basically looking at everything from a new eye and from a gendered uh -huh. eye. And she gives a really good example of the differences be between saying something like, uh, cheap labor, in other words, the labor is unskilled, it shouldn't be paid very much. People who do it are marginalized, and that's okay because that's just the way things are in society, just like hopping on a bike, you don't question it. Mm. But when you change that with a feminist curiosity and you call it labor made cheap, all of a sudden it's something different. It's labor that's not inherently cheap, but that was made, deemed to be cheap by a certain group of people for a certain reason. And when you turn it on its head like that, then oh, you're looking at cheap labor in a way you never have before. So when you put, get on this bike and you can't ride it, you're looking at it in a way that you've never looked at it before. And you're not just looking at it, it's your entire embodied being as you're fighting against what you thought you knew. One of the most humbling experiences I've done in a long time, and I think that's where education fits in too, that education is, can, can be seen as a process of being humbled. Uh, because not only you realize how much you don't know, but you begin to question what you took for granted. And uh, in doing that, and that can be a very humbling process. It's like from a sociocultural perspective, there are all these different kinds of discourses, structures, and so on in society that shape who we are and who we become and how we see the world and what we think is possible. Mm -hmm. And so that was a really great example of seeing we're all going to come to that particular experience or any experience in learning with a particular set of ideologies understandings, identities, perspectives. Mm -hmm. And our job as educators is to help us move, uh, stu is to help students move through um, and, and th think critically about those kinds of places mm -hmm. from which they've come. I want to thank everybody that helped put this video together. Uh, if you're interested in our programs here at Brock University, check out our Faculty of Education page. Uh, also, uh, I'd like to hear back from you as to why you think it's so difficult to ride this bike. Tweet me at Robert McRae, and I'd love to hear your thoughts. Thanks a lot, everybody.